Welcome to Twisted Monday with Twisted Metal 2 on the PC. We know it. We love it. Here's our beloved cast of characters. Revisiting the PC version surprisingly soon to play none of these characters. Uh-oh. Let me just real quick type in some words. That was glorious. And now... Ice cream. In case you didn't read the video description slash title. Today we have... Sweet Tooth and Twisted Metal 2. Needles Kane. From the circus, then the institute. Now he's coming to your home. Yeah, he's everywhere you don't want him to be. Terrible handling. Very high armor. And that's special. It's all about the special. Let's see it in action. For better or worse. So, playing as Sweet Tooth in the PC version is a flagrant cop-out on my part. It will be significantly easier to go through the whole game. And, uh, I was able to set up a bunch of saves for myself. Which you cannot do on the PlayStation version unless you use save states. But if you play the PlayStation version on a legitimate console, you have to play the entire game without ever reloading. You only have two lives from beginning to end. That is very difficult to accomplish. Instead of that, I have tons of safety saves and a shield that lasts forever. Just the rest of my life, I can spend this whole run shielded with an overpowered character. Sweet Tooth is a secret character for a reason. I talked about it in the Let's Play. That was years ago. Who remembers that? And it is all because of the special. Very high damage. Pretty strong homing. And constantly regenerating. We get tons and tons of specials. It's wonderful. <laughs> French fries and ice cream is indeed the Sweet Tooth special. Thank you so much for five months of subscription. Ah, uh, ridiculous. But that's a lot of Twisted Mondays to enjoy ad-free. Yeah, I'm effectively cheating to get this full playthrough done. But I did want to do it during October. The Sweet Tooth is a horrifying serial killer monster. Absolutely the stuff of horror movies. Seemed appropriate. This is more of an October celebration than my official Sweet Tooth Twisted Metal 2 run. I wouldn't be surprised if I end up doing a make good. Where I play Sweet Tooth, Twisted Metal 2, legitimately a PlayStation version. But I will have to be much better at the game to accomplish that. And I almost died on the first level in this much easier version of the game. Shows where I'm at today. Roadkill delivering himself up for a wall of specials. And there should be no more health refills for the remainder of this entire level. So that'll be fun. Plenty of weapons, though.
Refills might reappear at some point, but it is very unlikely. Got one. Just rub our invincible car up against poor Mr. Grimm. Didn't stand a chance. Thumper is also almost dead. Directly behind me. I have to imagine Outlaw 2 is around here somewhere. Because she always is, but I don't see her, no. Axel and some yellow dot. Who's got a yellow dot? Slam? Mr. Slam for you non small brawl players. No Spectre. It's a white dot. It just looked yellow on my screen. Hopefully it looks better and more clear on the video. I had more technical difficulties in getting this game to run this time. The last time I played it, it would only work in full screen mode. This time, it would only work in windowed mode, so I'm looking at a very, very small screen right now. This version is rather buggy on modern computers. At least for me. Perhaps other people get it to work just fine. Thumper is still alive. All I gotta do is, like, shoot him with a bullet. Or touch him with my car, and he's dead. And he's faster than me. As almost everyone is. There he goes. Just a couple bullets. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll let these play out. There we go. Congrats on the gift subs. Who doesn't love some ice cream cones? <laughs> Thank you once again for your dice. Yeah, honestly, calling Outlaw Outlaw 3 in head-on would have been a, like, cool thing to acknowledge continuity. But whatever. We have a decent number of items going into Moscow. Should be able to crank this out pretty quickly. Very small level that it is. There's all my safety saves. I've already lost one of my three lives, so inevitably I will have to use some of them, but I don't have any until next level. Beating this level should be no problem whatsoever. But if it's not, we gotta start from scratch. There are very few pickups here. Now we constantly generate specials, so it doesn't matter too much for us. But for normal vehicles, that could be a real pain. There's the free shots I was expecting. Mr. Slam's one and only move constantly frees you. Sometimes he follows it up with a grab, sometimes he just drives away. We are an ice cream truck, so I guess we enjoy frozen delights and tasty treats. The name that the Sweet Tooth vehicle was given was the Tasty Treats Ice Cream Truck in Twisted Metal Black, I believe. And that got him sued because that is an actual brand of ice cream truck. And the game said that it is used for murders and storing 
the corpses of children. That lawsuit was thrown out of court. But it's funny that it happened anyway. I should absolutely not be playing this recklessly. And that's why. But it doesn't matter. I did mention that I did have some trouble getting this to run properly on PC, but that is mostly for recording purposes. If you just want to play it, the download that I have is actually fairly well um, modernized for current PCs. Fans did get it. Hatched and working. I believe there's even a mod that rebalances the game. I don't know how that works because I'm definitely not playing that right now and I don't really have any intention to play it. It's bad enough that I'm playing the PC version at all, which is already pretty easy. It's a different experience from the Twisted Metal that I consider canon. But it does exist. And I believe it is even optimized for, like, online multiplayer. So if you really wanted to screw around with it, you could maybe even get that working. But like I said, if you just want to play it, no problem. A quick Google should turn it right up. Did for me, anyway. Not that I would ever encourage anyone to download any video game for free. Everyone, go to the Sony offices in Japan and just leave hundreds of dollars on their doorstep. For absolutely no reason, because you cannot purchase this version of the game. Nonetheless, you must pay for it somehow. Even if you don't intend to play it. That is... Modern game CEO logic. <laughs> as usual, the nice part about playing a Sweet Tooth is it doesn't show up as an enemy. Sweet Tooth is an incredibly obnoxious enemy everywhere in this game. And we do not have to deal with it for the entirety of this run. There's a friend. I was real lonely on these Paris streets for a while there. I believe they call it Ennui. But this is more familiar. Axel with his AI turned completely off. Sitting duck in the middle of the street. That happens fairly often on the PC version and on emulators, and I have never seen it happen on a legitimate console. So, that might actually be a bug. That only exists on modern implementations of the game. Whereas when you play the game legitimately, you do have to fight all the enemies, and they never just go blank for a while. There we go. Invincible. I am pretty sure Sweet Tooth is as wobbly as he's always been. But I haven't played the PlayStation version in a long time. So I cannot compare at the moment. If I ever do come back to this, get a legitimate run on a recording, it'll be far enough from now that I will have forgotten everything I'm saying and doing at this moment. Science will not be done. Getting health refills here is 
nightmarishly difficult. At least one of the good ones has been completely removed. The one in the Louvre. So there's nothing of value in here except this teleporter can get us to the rooftop. Unless Shadow appears directly in front of me while I'm trying to jump to the rooftop in that exact moment. That's the sort of thing that can happen. This is what safety saves are for. <laughs> Gotta use my mouse for this. Wee mouse. Load up our first safety save. It's nice how much of this game you get to see in the PC version. I don't intend to come back to it for a while after this. But it's still a fun curiosity. If you don't have a working version at all right now, this is a fantastic choice. Just boot up. It's a little easier. If you haven't played Twisted Metal 2 in a long time, you might actually have fun with this. Whereas the PlayStation version can be incredibly punishing. A little more gentle, but by no means easy. I've managed to die in every single level so far. A legitimate run would have to be done effectively deathless, so... There's a small hint at how difficult it would be. This vehicle's atrocious handling does make it really just go completely mad every so often. The fevered insanity of Sweet Tooth, or whatever. Try to put my shield up there. Probably gonna say that a lot, because it's still the case. Always gonna be hard to get energy moves to input properly. I do not want to be on this half of the map. I want to go all the way across the other side. Without dying somehow. There's Grasshopper. Did not use her yeehaw. Can't believe that worked. Supposedly this vehicle has one out of five speed. It seems significantly faster than one out of five would indicate. Still very slow. But I've played other slower vehicles. Vehicles that felt slower to me at least. Maybe like the slipperiness makes it feel faster because I'm sliding all over the place. Feels like I'm out of control, which can only mean speed. One more health refill up here. I'm out of control again. People are always dredging up prototype versions of these early Twisted Metals. And most of them have different stat screens. Or at least a few of the characters. I don't recall Twisted Metal 2 bothering with that, but for how inaccurate they are, the developers really spent a lot of time working out what the stat numbers should be. 
in a lot of these games. And they're all lies anyway, but they wanted them to be the most accurate lies you could possibly get. I don't find our ram damage to be especially abnormally good. But it could just be that our handling makes it so difficult to get a good lineup. There we go. Too slow on the shield. As soon as I saw Thumper, I started inputting a shield, but wasn't good enough. Thumper is much faster. Our special does arc, such that it often just flies over our target. But when it doesn't, they get creamed. The last two are ready to die. Begging for death, really. I don't know what those sparkly balls were that they were firing at me. Those weird blue and red fireballs. I know red fireballs are, and there they are again. Red fireballs are napalms, blue fireballs are free shots. I don't know how they're getting like combos. Both of those graphics are exclusive to the PC version. So I've had very little research on what they indicate. Oh, uh, Spectre died. Heart attack, I guess. There goes the last one. Yeah, Spectre's still smoldering over there and spraying smoke into the sky. Just thousands of smoke sprites. I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. On to our first boss level. But we're a long way away from the boss. I've actually discovered that Sweet Tooth's handling is so bad that if you're going full speed and do a handbrake turn, you can, if you just hold the direction, spin around basically infinitely. After like 10 rotations, you will lose your momentum and stop spinning. But before that point, You just get to rotate for a long, long time. It's very funny. There's no real way to get a good straightaway here on this level, unfortunately, so I can't show it off. Probably shouldn't have even brought it up. But maybe I'll remember it on a level that has actual drivable ground on it. We shall see. There's Outlaw. Absolute nightmare of an enemy. Good thing she hadn't been injured. Because she stole a health refill. But her and Thumper are hyper-aggressive in this game. They'll just orbit around you for a long time, and they're specials. Thumper's is a little harder to hit with. So he's not as dangerous, just a little more obnoxious than usual. But Outlaw can hit you from any angle. And when she does hit you, you will bounce into the sky. Just a ridiculous distance straight up. That is why Outlaw 2 is almost always the final enemy anytime she shows up in a level. She's an obnoxious pain that is super hard to pin down and get rid of.
some complaints about Hammerhead in chat. Not sure specifically why, but Hammerhead is the worst. Driver-wise. Also vehicle-wise in this game, it's pretty bad. But Mike and Stu are my least favorite characters in the series. And they've already been cast for the upcoming TV show, so... Look forward to them. Even though the TV show takes place in the Dark World and has a bunch of Dark World characters... They had to bring in Mike and Stu, how could you not? That's just fan service. Obviously, we all would have revolted... ...if Mike and Stu were not in this game. Or TV show. <laughs> But there will be a game based on the TV show, so... They're probably gonna be in there, too. Axel has a bit of the same AI routine... ...as Outlaw and Thumper. Or will just get on top of you. And... ...hammer that special. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more of that. Because he's typically pretty aggressive. So aggressive, in fact, that his voice clip will, like, layer on top of itself and echo. Because he's literally firing his special multiple times per second whenever he gets the opportunity to uh, get on top of you like that. Which is impossible, but he's doing it anyway because he's the AI. Yeah, right there, you could see... The ground sprite that indicates the shockwave. There were multiple of those. All around the vehicle because he was literally firing the special multiple times at the same time. I haven't actually played as Axel, so I only know as an enemy he's as big a pain in the ass as he ever has been. Which is a very big pain in the ass, but there he goes. Axel power, no more. The power's out. Uh, Twister, no longer. And, okay, there's one more enemy somewhere around here. Over to my right. The real balancing factor of this game is that health refills basically don't respawn unless you die. And I have recorded evidence to the contrary, but for the most part that seems to be the rule. I don't know why sometimes they do respawn. Even when you don't die in the interim. But basically that means... Don't drive through lava because it sprays too many steam sprites on your goddamn screen. <laughs> no, it means, um, you have a very limited health pool for life. But when the boss appears, that's when all the health refills come back. And this should be no problem whatsoever. Here he comes. Ooh, nice. I've tried on the uh, PSP version of uh, Twisted Metal Head On. And I've been meaning to go back to it. It is about as different from the PS2 version as Twisted Metal 2 on the PlayStation is from the PC version. Seemed like Minion had his back wheels stuck in the air for some reason, rendering him completely helpless. I think he was, he had his back slightly over that curve, left him pointed straight up. And therefore utterly helpless. And I don't feel bad about choosing that because he was going to be easy regardless. 
I'm the boss now. <laughs> There's my punishment for cheesing that. Immediately, but very slowly, slide off the edge so that I can really think about what I did. We should still probably be fine for this level. Although I don't have very much ammo at this point. In that I only have one special. Yeah, I think there was one Spectre special that chased me. While I was dying. Because those things are relentless. Trying to fight Mr. Slam's corpse here. I got a really good shot with the ricochet bomb, so it hit two of the uh, concrete barriers. Probably didn't hit any enemies, but amazing that it lasted that long anyway. Here's where I died the last time, so let's be careful. Very slippery vehicle. Tremendous amount of weight on these wheels. Oh, hi, Thumper. It is ridiculously hard to get into this hole. It's hard on the PlayStation version, it's way harder here. And even harder when someone is hounding you. Someone who just got the health refill that I was going for. Fortunately, there's a better health refill over here. Just like Twisted Metal 1, the window that you can smash through is opaque. Not a transparent texture. As it is on the PlayStation. It's a notable step down in graphical quality. Even though most of the game is much more clear in terms of graphics. God damn it. Just drive it along by to my own business. The ghost missile pushes me off a building. Legitimately couldn't even do anything. <laughs> Too much momentum. Not enough control. Sweet Tooth is weirdly weightless in this game. Just goes flying when he's hit with anything. So... I'll have to keep in mind to not go anywhere near those areas. Just hang out here. Get everybody with specials. As they come to me. Now about the new Twisted Metal game, it's really, really difficult to make a good Twisted Metal game at this point. But it's also pretty bad to make a bad, or pretty difficult to make a bad Twisted Metal game. The formula is pretty rigid and solid and hard to screw up. As long as cars are combating one another, I think they pretty much got it under control. Although, there was a different development team that got kicked off the project because they had made a car combat game very recently that was notoriously terrible. I don't even remember the name of it, but I talked about it in previous Twisted Monday playthroughs. I haven't heard anything about the new game in a long time. Probably just means there's no updates. But perhaps it could be canceled. They wouldn't really tell us if it was canceled. But it's definitely had its share of development difficulties. And it doesn't even exist yet, so. 
Always a bad sign. And yeah, the game in question was Destruction All-Stars. Its developer was supposed to make the next Twisted Metal, but the game flopped really badly. Got super terrible reviews. So, they lost that privilege. But I think the guy who was directing their version of Twisted Metal switched to the new team. So he is still in charge of direction. They really just wanted the stink of the um, other developer's name off the game. I tend to doubt that it is worth all that effort. I guess that at least applies, at least implies, that it's not going to be just a totally soulless cash grab. They're actually trying to do the best for the game and having tremendous difficulties in that effort. So it could still be doomed. We shall see. If I ever do play Vigilante 8, it will be as Twisted Monday bonus content. So... Keep watching these streams, and maybe someday... I'll play the other car combat game that people have heard of. No promises, though. But I am running out of stuff to do bonus content about, so... Any idea I can manage, I might pursue. We saw Zombie Driver a few weeks ago. And I will be playing more Zombie Driver eventually. Gotta do this. What would the world be without a sexy Statue of Liberty? Okay, same one as last time. I feel like the whole point of that is you get the sexy bikini lady, and then you bring your friend over after saying, Hey, the Statue of Liberty turns into this sexy bikini lady, check it out. And then you go to show it off, and it's, it's her. And then you're embarrassed in front of your friend. Good prank, David Jaffe. We're all very proud of what you've accomplished here today. I saw Mr. Grimm a while ago. Seems to have disappeared. The radar's having a hard time keeping track of him. Okay, he's on the rooftops where the health refill can be collected. I think. That's a terrible place to fight and a bad place for Mr. Grimm. But he fell off. So he's over here somewhere. Can ambush me and push me off the edge. We've seen that happen. Where'd he go? Rid of him. So we move on to the next level with a fairly high inventory of weapons. <clears throat> I see videos from Jaffe's YouTube sometimes. And uh, one of them was like, is this joke too problematic? And would I still do it today? And it was a picture of the Statue of Liberty in a bikini. So, if you want to get his modern stance on whether or not he would do that today, watch that terrible video that I have no interest in watching. I don't want the answer. <laughs> Let's 
pretty sure I know what the answer is, though. It's not even, like, that interesting or offensive. Like, who cares if he would? Honestly, not a big deal either way. There we go. I got bounced a little bit too much. Don't like my odds on this particular run. There we go, multiple axle powers. Axle, axle power power. They removed the health refill from on top of this archway. Because who needs those? And they replaced it with that uh, Santa Claus. There's a unique pedestrian in the uh, PC version here. And I killed it already. But since I'm almost certainly going to have to do this level again, we might still see it. I certainly have to do this level again, so we're going to go see it. Waiting for it to load. Got my mouse at the ready. Here we go. Antarctica. I will say the best thing about Twisted Metal is it's interactables and destructibles and stuff. So you gotta go to town with those. They are often highly enjoyable. I do not get why windowed mode captures my mouse so often. Love that change. Full screen never captured my mouse. Mysteries abound. Windowed mode also tends to hang every so often. Just stick for a couple of frames. I've actually seen that not very frequently, so that's nice. Now that I mentioned it, it's probably going to happen constantly. Ah, uh, Chad is talking about David Jaffe's worst video, which... There's a reason he, like, deleted his YouTube. <laughs> or rather, he deleted all the videos that were on there. Because they used to be old man politics rants. And even he, I guess, was embarrassed of them. Those videos probably are not in contention for Worst David Jaffe video. Because if they were, they would all win in a, like, 30-way draw. Most of his modern videos are about game design and stuff that he remembers about Twisted Metal specifically. And some of them are actually quite insightful. His channel is where I got all the um, alternate endings for Twisted Metal 2012. He's got them all uploaded on his channel. Rough edits with actual live-action footage. Still a miracle that they exist, so glad he archived those. I'll be talking more about them next week. I'm not looking forward to that. But for now, we'll enjoy Twisted Metal 2 until it drops the ground out from underneath me and kills me again. Shadow, get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, the floor is gone. So now I can't get the full health. 
And that was the last health refill that was available. Rude. The RNG in this level is absolutely brutal. But it does seem to prioritize making parts of the floor drop when you are standing on them. Yep, right now. I entered a new area, so the floor's gotta drop out. And while I was trying to leave, Grasshopper took advantage of the situation. Honestly, pretty smart, but there we go. Instead of a health refill, we get a Santa Claus. You are on the wrong pole, my friend. This is the South Pole. Screwed up. There isn't even anyone here to give presents to. What is wrong with you? Besides the cross-country skiers. Hey, Grasshopper actually attacked Mr. Slam. Accidentally, I'm sure. Still helps me. Might as well set off remote bombs on my feet. And Outlaw 2, of course. The final girl, every single level. And always a gigantic pain. Any weapons? I'm gonna need those. And move on. Hopefully I don't get flung off the edge, because there's barely any level left. Let's get every available weapon. Hang it on one of the very few parts of the level that cannot implode. I'll head back here. Enemies actually spawn on top of the teleportation pad, but players do not. So we can set up a big damage trap and almost get flung off the edge of the tiny island. There we go. Remote bomb myself to kill Outlaw. We still have one extra life left and a nearly full inventory. <laughs> My policy with David Jaffe is like, just Ignore his old man rants. Treat him like somebody's dad. Just... He has the best of intentions with his creations. And he isn't entirely hateful, unlike a lot of other creators, so... We cut him some slack here. Until he goes, like, full-on... Typical gamer guy. I will tolerate Jaffe. That's my policy, at least. He's mostly just, like, ridiculously embarrassing. <laughs> just like somebody's dad. And he is somebody's dad. Hopefully that person is doing fine <laughs> for themselves. I think it's Warthog that fires those sparkly fireballs. Because they only appear when Warthog's around. Yeah, his worst take is thinking that Twisted Metal 1 is better than Twisted Metal Black. 
which is still pretty absurd. But everyone is entitled to their ridiculous opinions. Not when those opinions are factually wrong. But Twisted Metal 1 is better than Twisted Metal Black is not factually wrong, just highly disagreeable to the vast majority of humankind. I have a lot of power missiles. I don't know where I got the ball. I also have a lot of enemies left. Not a ton of health. Everyone's nice and beat up. I've seen people talk extensively about how too... how black is too edgy. Which... perfectly viable opinion. I think its best feature is its consistent tone. It's a ridiculously dark tone, but it maintains that tone in pretty much everything that it does. Whereas every other Twisted Metal game cannot settle on a tone to save its life. Twisted Metal 1 and 2 have very, very, very dark moments. But because they are generally colorful, they are often mistaken for kids' games. Small Brawl, we... The most recent level I played in Small Brawl had... Maybe the most disturbing ending in all of Twisted Metal history. And that's the kids game in the series. All that's left is roadkill. Didn't even need to come in here with full lives. Unless Roadkill gets me. But... He shouldn't? Here. Pretty you. Oh, I don't even know why I'm proceeding. My odds of getting through the final level and the two final bosses with no ammo and no extra lives is... It's just unlikely. But I can always give it a shot. Probably either die immediately or die right at the finish line. The latter would be far worse. not died immediately. So we see the trajectory I'm on here. Yeah, even though I'm a huge fan of the dark world of Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal Black is my favorite by far, both thematically and gameplay-wise. I was definitely hoping for a return to the colorful world. Especially with the Revival series coming out. And I was very, very disappointed when they announced that Raven was going to be one of the characters. And John Doe was going to be the main character. Because that means... Dark World much as I love it, I'm sick of it. 
2012. Killed and buried it. But they've got a weird blend of Dark World and Colorful World, which maybe that's the best way to go for fan service purposes. You can't really tell a very dramatic story in the Colorful World. So I at least get it from a show developing perspective. You've got more interesting tools to work with in a black inspired setting. Got a bunch of lightning pickups. Don't think that's going to help me very much. Enemies are grabbing all the health refills. That's not going to help me at all. Because they don't reappear very often in this game. For largely unknown reasons. That businessman. I guess now I just need some weapons and to kill five more enemies. Didn't even realize that was how many were left. Gruesome. PC version is Abandonware. And should be downloadable pretty much anywhere with a quick Google search. Worked for me anyway. It really should spruce it up. In fact, I've encouraged them to at least compile the games together and re-release them officially. I don't know why they haven't, but they haven't. Perhaps they never will. I'm wasting far too much time on the doomed run. But I do have a lot of specials now. That's at least one enemy killed with specials alone. We have a volunteer. I like that his car, when it gets beat up, has bullet holes all over it. But I didn't shoot him with any bullets. I just showered him in hot ice cream. Why doesn't the game show damaged vehicles with hot ice cream all over them? What a waste. Another one down. Hey, a follower. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy my weekly Twisted Metal playthroughs. I do this, frankly, too often. I'm flooding the market. Hey, I killed somebody with a rear fire. Nice work. It's extremely ridiculous that they haven't re-released um, head-on, ever. Not since the PS2 version in 2008. I guess that was in and of itself a re-release, but that version was woefully neglected. And like, it has a lot of technical issues that you could clean up pretty easily on modern consoles. Oh 
God, Outlaw 2 is here. Fortunately, I have a near unlimited invincibility. So she's dead. Still kind of annoying. Oh, that was the last enemy. Nice. I mean, my playthroughs are mostly billed as casual playthroughs. But I've been playing these games for years. I am far from the best that you can find out there, but certainly above average. So Dark Tooth should be pretty manageable because I can spend this entire fight invincible. And I have a lot of weapons, so bad news, final boss. You screwed with the wrong little clown boy. I do love that he's here to avenge the death of his son. And uh, did so by killing his son. My shield wouldn't go off there. <laughs> Tragic. Well, we have safety saves, but I cannot respawn at the boss. So I do have to replay the entire level, but I can do so much more recklessly now. Get the damn mouse out of here. Hi, Mr. Grimm. My special. Just when I was talking about how astounding my skill levels are. Not exactly perfect, but that was mostly a tragic error caused by overconfidence and my energy moves not going off. Happens to the best of us. I did do a sick dodge of Mr. Grim Skull by mere millimeters. That's about as close as you can possibly get to that skull. So, never gonna get a better look at that thing. Chased me into a little corner. Now they're gonna regret it. So I got a lot of weapons. Well, not really. I have enough weapons. Hammerhead's trying to run me over. Adorable. We have to go back through the subway. It's specifically to get these items, so let's not drive past them. Force of habit there. Yeah, I was going to make an emote out of the skull from this game, but it doesn't look very good. And I can't find a clean sprite of the scary demon face. Twisted Metal 1. Maybe in my recent playthrough I was able to get a clean enough shot. But it did not feel like it. Okay, doing battle in the subway is always a bad idea. I think I cleaned it out. Oh, there's a turbo. Power missile. Those will be good to have. Oh, 
That's one reason to do battle in the subway. Roadkill got hit several times by the train. And he's out of here. It's funny how many games in the series have um, car models or taxi cabs, but do not include Yellow Jacket as a playable vehicle. Axel went berserk there and killed two of the enemies by spamming his special so rapidly that no one could possibly survive. I almost died. But I have shields. They do not. I heard his voice overlap like three or four times there. He was going to town. <laughs> and he did a lot of the work for me. I don't have infinite specials, so... I could not have possibly drained that much HP out of Warthog that quickly. Making my life so much easier. Up, oh, Outlaw. Let's line it up and take her out. And all that's left is Axel and Hammerhead right on top of each other, so Hammerhead might be annihilated soon enough. Yeah, let's see if I can make Axel get another kill. Just lure him into spamming specials. Do it. Do the thing. Now he's doing too much to me. This is too dangerous of a plan. My ice cream cones went right by him. Oh, sorry, Axel. Two kills is enough for you. And Hammerhead's all that remains. No longer. Old stuff is Dark Tooth. Again. I will teach him how to use napalm cones. I was doing it first. He did love Molotov cocktails in the first game. I'll give him that much. So irresponsible use of fire runs in the family. Got some power missiles here, a ton of power missiles. Seems like Dark Tooth might have more HP. But it doesn't matter. Because I can spend the entire fight invincible. Which is exactly what I tried to do last time. Heads up, you freak. The senile fool screams. I only realized recently that the fact that the final boss turns into a severed head with a pilot inside and attacks you in that form at the end of the game is referenced in Twisted Metal 2012 when you fight the Iron Maiden boss. And the final phase of that fight is the severed head of the Iron Maiden attacking you with a pilot inside. Hadn't even considered that fact. Uh, this part is super easy. Never stood a chance. Now, this cutscene will probably break. Let's see. 
Uh, no. Skipped right to credits. Fair enough. <laughs> it's a good thing I prepared for this. So, let's watch the credits. And then we'll get our prize. Look at how clean this credits logo is. It looks shiny. Wow. Don't you worry. Sweet Tooth will get a wish. But let's see who's responsible for what we just did. Special thanks to David Jaffe in the game he directed. Oh, that's not David Jaffe. That's Dave Jaffe. David directed the game. Dave is just a guy who gets special thanks. <laughs> Fair enough. Here we go. We are ready. After these very short credits. Let me just... Get that out here. And... Enjoy! Sweet Tooth, the winner of the Twisted Metal Contest, was granted an audience with the founder of the competition. I had agreed to grant a winner any prize they requested. There would be no limits on price, size, or in this case, even reality. Sweet Tooth told me he wanted to live out his greatest fantasy. To become a bug in a tiny little garden out in the country. It would be a life of relaxation and love, a life of peace. A final escape from his madness. The night sky exploded with light. And when the light faded, Sweet Tooth had gotten his wish. For the rest of his days, he enjoyed his new life in the garden, away from all those who would tell him he was crazy. The other insects were not fans of their new neighbor, for he had a tendency to kill them. Oh, but Sweet Tooth was happy, and whenever he got lonely for human companionship, or for human flesh, all he had to do was look up and dream of the day when he would crawl out of the garden and back into the world of man. Oh, I am Calypso, and I thank you for playing Twisted Metal. Creepy ass ending. I always liked it a lot. But let me um, point some of that out. I'm going to bring it back up real quick. Take a look at Sweet Tooth's face here. Specifically, his uh, left eye. There we go. It is X'd out. Just like Sweet Tooth's eye in Twisted Metal Black on his mask is X'd out like that. And then that sort of became a thing in 2012 and pretty much ever since. It appears to have maybe started here. It's also a like, weird reflection thing, but I don't know, it does look sort of like they intentionally X'd out his eyeball. He's also drooling, so it's not a mask. That is his real face. But somehow he has X's for eyes. Probably. That was my read, re-watching this for the first time in years, earlier today. So there we go. Try and sleep after watching that. But not right now. Right now there will be no sleep. Because we have more stream to do. I'm going to play an entire additional game to make up for the fact that that was a cop-out run where I was able to use saves. Not intended for our Sweet Tooth. I'm going to go play the entirety of a non-Twisted Metal game, but Twisted Metal adjacent. We'll say it's special thanks to Rio Dice, even though I was planning to do this anyway, but Rio Dice loves War of the Monsters, made by Incognito Entertainment. David Jaffe came up with the idea of it. And I'm going to do a full playthrough of that game in a few minutes here. Because Rio Dice provided a bunch of gift subs, and that's awesome. So stay tuned if you want some more. Horror, but 1950s style. Not quite car combat, but close enough for me. But that's the end of Twisted Metal 2. I am Fiendly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.